Greetings. Okay. So, we know that there is a lot of things happening on the planet, around us, above us, beneath us, the so-called beings, the animals, the, the extra sensory life forms, whatever you want to call it, whatever lingo we want to use, however we see fit. As we bring ourselves in and out this planet, in and out, con in and out of consciousness, when we speak vernacular, we have to bring ourselves in into this dimension and out of it. You know, uh, aside from research, aside from a lot of things, aside from many beings speaking in many in forms of light, you know, um, excuse me, excuse us. The one thing that we are doing most of the time is traveling. So this is where the idea of, of soul ships come in. Because most of us can't really, most of us, you know, the, the average ordinary being on the planet can't really see or can't really comprehend or, you know, whatever, what the actual planet really looks like most of the time or all the time because here you have you know you have you have night and day and you have to wonder what's in between night and day and then we say okay between night and and day is the earth, the planet. So, yes, when we, when people, when beings circumnavigate the planet, travel across the planet, you know, they go into planes, they, they travel through, through means of technology, they see daytime and they see nighttime. They see the sun and the moon and the stars. But in between, in between daytime and nighttime, the sun and the moon and the stars is, in fact, the planet. And there's, and you know, people say, and and and, and you know, people, both people, and a lot of things. What people are saying is that, well, there are multiple reality in between stacked on each other like pancakes there's multiple dimensions and multiple realms of the so-called reality on top of each other and there's just so much going on that you you truly can't really suffice you truly can't really know and feel what it looks like or what it feels like to be or to travel to that certain place because because of what kind of technology surrounds us and what type of technology what type of technology we are using and and the kind of technology we have access to at at that space and time So, so we have these, you know, we have these, um, these places where, where people have traveled to, like, um, 
the center of the earth or the moria or hyperborea or you know the shambhala or these these places that people think that they 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 go to or they travel to and you hear it a lot and then you say most of us don't know most of us can't really go there most of us can't really know for sure what, what would it be like to go there and then we say you're already in it you're already in Shambhala you're already in that special place where you think you need to go to and then you say well you know what we don't really see it we don't really see it a special place you know the, that's not the type of reality that what we've been given to see or formally what we can perceive because you know the ether or the the time whatever you want to call it is moving at a certain at a certain at a certain space and then you say well that's what that's what it is We have to, you, we have to build something. You, we have to build a spaceship. And when we say spaceship, we don't mean, we don't mean bolts. We don't mean screws and 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 fuel and a rocket ship. No, we, we need to build, or people are building, or have been building these soul ships, which is their souls they're using their soul ships to circumnavigate this universe or this planet, or this planet or part of the planet so their perception of 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 reality their perception of this world of this earth changes because they're so connected to it You know, like how can you be so connected to it when you don't see it, or when you don't, you feel like you don't need to see it, or you feel like you need to um, say something about it, or you need some sort of attention? See, because this doesn't acquire attention from people. This doesn't acquire attention from human beings. This doesn't acquire attention from any span of of bodily intelligence except for the planet see the planet wants your energy the planet wants you wants you to travel whatever shape or form that is she wants you to be in her jungle into the deepest parts of the ocean into the deepest parts of her forests into the deepest parts of canyons and whatever shapes and forms you want to call it into the deepest parts of the sky into the ocean into wherever that it is, whatever that it is and then you travel and travel and travel and travel and travel for many miles many distances through night and day and you get to a certain place to a certain time and you wonder and wonder and wonder hmm I'm like I wonder if you ever seen something different of like you know like you get this feeling like have you ever not seen money before have you ever not seen money not being used in a certain time and space so like, can you ever perceive that has anyone ever perceived that and then you say well some of us we really don't know what that is meaning we don't know what that truly feels like to not you know to not use money to not have that idea of what money was or is 
that's when you'll know things have truly changed. That's when you'll know that the realm of reality where you travel to or your soul ship has traveled to when you don't see or view money as um, as a a source of a reality changer at least in this uh, in this so called dimension maybe in other dimensions they have, they don't use money you know they probably use imagination rather you know like certain certain places that you go to you know these hidden places the the forbidden places like you truly you don't you know you can't go there unless you think about it you know like you don't you can't travel there unless you if you don't have that kind of imagination right you can't travel there unless you don't have money unless you have money you can't travel you can't go on the plane you can't get your ticket um you don't have your passport you know you don't have you gotta bring your clothes, you gotta bring your, your, your extra stuff along with you, you know, and then you say yes, yeah, we traveled across places and see many spaces and seen the, the sky change and it seems like it's always changing, but, you know, people say when you know when you do travel to certain parts of the planet some one side of the planet it's always shining one side of the planet it's always dark and uh other side of the planet it's night and day and so we we come back to this to to, to this and say okay so what's when we said what's in between night and day is the planet In between night and day is the planet. So your experience is the planet. Okay, so if you're experiencing the planet, yes, then what's then what's experiencing daytime and nighttime? You ever thought about that? Like you see like the sky moving you see the clouds moving you might see the sun moving you might see the moon moving whatever that case may be but you know you you know like what's actually moving the light that that's moving around the realm what's moving the light that's moving on top of the planet see there's a light <laughs> moving on top of the realm, on top of the planet, because there you go, like, from wherever you are, um, from where everyone, anyone else is, when you, so-called, when, you know, when you walk outside, when you go outside and you look up and you see the sun, or you see whatever it is, you see, you see light, and then you say, okay, you know, when the sun comes back to your realm, or, you know, on the side of your planet, it's the light starts to spread throughout the entire realm and it illuminates everywhere that you see if you know for that time of being but it moves along and along and along and it 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 transitions to other places and then what does it leave behind the 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 veil of you know the the, the light leaves and then underneath the light is that is nighttime that darkness see but there's still light operating in the sky it's not totally pitch dark you still have light in the sky and and then you know people say and then the, the deepest forms of research as people get into the ether and then the ether is the ground or the soil and you need a light and then the darkness is the soil and then the trees are the the light 
is actually light coming out of the soil in that sense and it's it's like okay then you're in this uh, projected so called holographic reality and stuff like that but and then you say what is it made of and then you say okay no, I think I've gone we've gone so much um, we were talking about soul ships right okay so your soul ship which is your soul in which you are in your body is a soul ship so you take your soul ship and you travel this place and it takes you to anywhere you want to be and people you know they say like well that's not important you know going to these to these places to where people can perceive what these places are what these places really look like or what they think what they want it to look like isn't that already in your imagination aren't all these places to see like how would you know like how would you know like you 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 would go to this place and you say oh, wow i've never been here before right you see you say that to yourself you say wow i've never been i've never seen this place before i've never been here before really really can you ever name a place you've never been can you really can you can we really say that can you can we ever name a place we've never been to and i'm starting to think like no no i really never actually know or would never know that i've never been to a certain place before yeah and it's like well you've been to earth right you went you you're on the planet so I guess that's that's pretty much you know that's pretty much where you be you know you've you've always been on the planet where you you know you you, you know like have you ever left the planet have you ever do you would you ever leave parts of the planet see you would be on the planet but you just don't people just don't travel to parts of it like they wouldn't travel f- so far off that they would have to go underground or they would go you know through these parts like waterfalls and um, you know caverns and mountains and stuff like that you know because movies movies, cartoons, TV shows, whatever, have always shown you what the planet may really look like. And that could be your imagination. Your imagination can really show you what, you know, what this planet already is or what it's going to be. Despite of the things that we read despite of what the things that we that this internet is showing us and the planet is going to turn into this and this and that and the the, the sun's going to turn blue or whatever or whatever that it, it might really be you know, your imagination can bring you to that place into that time and space past present and future why not? That's why the 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 genetic code, the genetic material that's linked to your DNA is um, they say it's important potency. Your neuromelanin is important. Neuromelanin is interstellar. 
So when we say your neuromelanin is interstellar, that means you can travel to places, to these places. And you know we said okay, so your your soul, your your soul ship. And you say well, your neuromelanin. Okay, so they're one and the same. You know you say well, you can't speak for everybody. You, know, you can't speak for everybody, so. You can only speak for the people, or you, know, you can only speak for yourself as a being, or other beings, whatever you want to call yourself. But as a, as a universal being, then that, that shouldn't really be the case at all. As a universal being, you should be able to travel to many places as you see fit. This realm, um, or the planet at all, shouldn't really, you know, really hinder you or stop you from traveling anywhere you would want to go. And you say, well, you know, because maybe the way that you were brought up here, the way that you incarnated on the planet, the way you went to school, the way that you you know, the way that you've uh, earned an education, the way that you met people, and all this research about space and time has got you where you wanted to be, and so on and so forth. Right? And then, um, getting healthier, uh, obtaining knowledge, Studying DNA, studying genetics, anatomy, you know, yourself, uh, studying the self, or your higher self, or nature, studying nature, which is really yourself, uh, is the thing. I don't think you would ever leave nature, <coughs> and I don't think nature would ever leave you. And you say, well, okay, so what is this universe then? This, this, you know, this is a, this is a water-filled universe. So, everywhere you go is water. Everywhere you think you see it's, you know, it's made out of water. Even the very hard, so-called hard thing is just made out of water. And how can that be made out of water? And well... This is a water-filled universe, so find something that's outside of water. Truly. And then you say, okay, so, whoa, and then people say, no, it's, uh, it's density and buoyancy, and it's solid, liquid, and gases, right? So... So what's sleeping, like what's dreams, I mean, like when you, when you dream about things and you, you go into your dream and you, you can walk through walls or you, you go into the ethers and you start swimming in space, see, or you go into this spaceship or you go into the mothership and you travel through realms and dimensions and wow. Then you have this connection with beings. And you say, well, it's not just any beings, it's you're connected to the universal being, right? The, the universal organism, right? And this universal organism is, is the whole thing or what you think is the whole thing, if you think it's the whole thing, is the whole thing. Your perception of the whole thing is what you think that it, what you think that, what you think it is, or what we think it is. See, we can use our imagination and, you know, it could pull us to, you know, many, many thought forms, but at the same time, you know, we said before, I'm like, well, 
you know, it doesn't really change much because you got to bring yourself down into this, you know, when you speak vernacular, you got to bring yourself into this dimension to bring yourself down to a, le- a little something out of you so you can express it. And it gets to the realms of people's, um, you know, turning people turning green, people turning purple, people turning blue, like the avatar, and then it gets into, you know, neuromelanin, what your, what your neuromelanin is, you know, uh, your connection to the sun, what the sun's doing to you, what, what do you think genetics is, what do you think DNA is, what is, what does all of this mean to you? What does all of this mean to your family? What does it mean to your friends? What does it mean to the community? But really, what does this mean to the planet? What does the planet mean to you? What is the planet communicating to you? What is the planet showing you? Ultimately. Ultimately. You need to connect to the planet, not the people on the planet. Well, maybe some of them, you know, to get some some sort of point across. But when you say, well, you know, when you're speaking like this, you have to be speaking to to when you're speaking vernacular. You're speaking to someone in this dimension, or you're speaking to someone in this realm of reality, or whatever thought form that they're in. Right. Um, so yeah, you have to bring yourself into their dimension to speak vernacular, vernacularly in this dimension in order to, to get your psychological and metaphysical point across. Right. So you you get your point from this universe to the other. You get your point from this planet to the other. You get your point from this dimension to the other, through vernacular. And you say, well, okay, so what are you doing then? Are you time traveling? Are you, well, what are you doing? I say, well, it's up to you. Well, how do you, how do you perceive it to be? So you're time traveling, I say, okay, you're a time traveler because you can, you can speak your way into these places and spaces and say things about this place and you just, and you say to yourself and you tell yourself all these extra things but you don't really get to see it right you truly don't you truly don't get to really see it unless you really see it unless you really go travel there for yourself as an experience see all of this all of these things to where people would want to take certain substances to experience something that they think they want to experience but it, you know at the same time it's just very very it's very um, it's very mm-hmm. what is this it's very taboo as they say it's very it's very plain or it's very bland it's very plain the things that you hear what people talk about their their so called psychedelic experience and it's like oh I took I took acid and I took psilocybin mushrooms I took DMT and then I went into outer space or I shot up somewhere and, and I said, okay, I guess, you know, perhaps so. But then, like, a lot of, the, a lot of these other things that would, you know, when you get into, like, these, these, um, these esoteric speakers and these teachers and they talk about genetics and they talk about DNA and time and space and and you kind of mix that up with 
psychedelics and you wonder like okay so okay so what's um that's your soul variety your soberness right you're sober you you are sober at least at least that's what you perceive your your perception of sobriety is what you perceive and you, you perceive your sobriety as saying well i didn't smoke today i didn't drink i didn't drink anything today i didn't you know take anything today i didn't take anything else of what i perceive to be a psychedelic so i i think i'm sober or you think you're sober and that's where you start or that's where you begin or that's where you find yourself is your sobriety I said okay you're sober and then and then what do you what, what happens after that so well that's where you gotta start your sobriety you know your sobriety is, in fact, the place where you've always started, at least. And then when you find yourself, and so when you catch yourself, or when you find yourself intoxicated through other means, then you're, you're just intoxicated. And you still have to deal with the, you know, the poison, whatever that you put in your body, and, and deal with that and take it out. And start all over again and you you know you gotta you come down and you go back up to your soul variety and then you know you have this you know this this you're in this state your sober state and you keep going up and up and up and up and up see like a loop almost like a loop in the sense of you always, uh, people or, or beings always uh, look towards intoxication or psychedelic experiences to bring their sobriety in other, to bring their sobriety in other places. See? So your sobriety can actually be psychedelic in a sense of trying to put that together and I'm like, okay, so you're sober, but you're psychedelic at the same time, so how does that work? When you're sober, but you didn't take anything, but you're psychedelic? You're a psychic? You're, what? You're telepathic? You're, but you're sober. Yeah, you're sober. Yeah, we're sober. But you're psychedelic. Yeah, but we're still sober. But you're telepathic. Okay, but you're still sober, right? You're sober. You don't smoke. You don't drink nothing. You don't take nothing. So it, it 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 goes back to your sobriety. Thinking about all this stuff, it's like, okay, you're sober, and then you you get into the other places of, uh, you know, psychic abilities or telekinesis or telepathy, and then, okay, so you got to start from your sobriety, and then you add all these other things of what people are talking about or people wanting to gain these these abilities to make themselves feel better or to make themselves you know expand their so-called consciousness more and be a beacon of light in society or in their families or in their whatever forms of thoughts of groups of thoughts of where they think they belong to as a matter of fact which is nature nature is your rehabilitation is the only rehab rehab center (coughs) 
I was like, okay, so like, why do people do drugs in nature? Why do people take mushrooms and they go, or they take ayahuasca or they smoke DMT and they go into the deep forest and why do they trip and stuff like that? Why do they see things? And then you say, well, that's, that's, it's like, the planet is what the planet is, and she's showing you every day what she transforms into, and she comes back, and she, she, she transforms, she comes back, transforms, comes back, and she has these things to where you take them these mushrooms, these, the DMT, the, the ayahuasca, and sometimes I heard it, I heard sometimes the ayahuasca is being called she, sometimes because it's a female, right, it's a, they say the, the marijuana plant is a female plant, it's a feminine plant, so everything that you take even the fruits, even some of the psychedelics are female substances. This is a female. If it's this is a female planet, and all of this is coming out of a female, then you must be in taking something feminine, right? For the most part. So. What is, what is something that you're taking in that's feminine, that's from the planet, does it make you psychologically, you know, does it make you psychologically effeminate? Are you seeing femininity when you're tripping out on mushrooms, when you're tripping out on DMT, when you take these things, are you seeing... Are you seeing what a female is supposed to be seeing? Or is that what you're really supposed to be seeing when you're sober? Right? Is, is it really your perception? Is it really your take on it? Right? So yeah, I think we've really gathered so much, um, so much things here the same time I really we really we really don't really know or what we were really talking about but we've kind of gathered so much stuff here in this space um, this sober space actually this is a very sober space and we just wanted to share this so we hope that we've wanted to share this and we've shared it now now and then later today whatever you want to call it and hopefully we will share more and continue to share our sobriety And may the boundless universe be with you all.